We're going to look at a video that I've titled Everything You Need to Know About Representative Volume LM Modeling Within Abacus. This is something we do quite a lot within computational modeling. And I want to show you all the steps of the critical things you need to know. If you're interested in this video, sit back and relax as we get started. So if you want to do a Representative Volume Element Modeling within Abacus, the first thing you need to consider is the RV choice or the unit cell choice. As the name suggests, representative volume element. So what element in your domain is most representative of a problem that you're trying to solve? So a lot of times, people either decide to use a unit cell or an actual RVE. And the choice of whichever you want to use depends on the architecture that you're trying to model. So if you're modeling something that's got a homogeneous architecture, then your RVE would have to be a unit cell. If you're modeling something that has a heterogeneous architecture, in which case there are random distribution of particles within the domain, then you would have to probably use a representative volume element. And I just want to illustrate this to you inside Abacus. So let's get into Abacus. So what we have here is the representative volume element of a unidirectional composite. So the areas that look like dark red are basically the metrics and the parts that are sort of green are the fibers. And we see two different representations of the representative volume element. The right one is for a random distribution of the fibers within the microstructure. And so if you look here, the fibers are sort of randomly distributed. There is no positioning in them. And on the right hand side, we see an ordered arrangement, what you call a square uh, unit cell arrangement. And so on the right hand side, you've got a unit cell on the left hand side, you've got an RV. So the choice is for you to determine right at the beginning which of these two representations forms your RVE. And if you're interested in learning a bit more about the whole choice of presented one element and how that will fit, what are the criteria in choosing them, I would like to direct you to this video which I've made that deals with this extensive. If you've not subscribed to this channel, I do encourage you to subscribe. I know that I've taken a little break for this channel and so I have not really been making videos in the last, you know, probably up to six months. So yes, I was working on a different project and I wasn't, you know, I didn't have the time to make videos on this channel, but I'm back and I want to be making quite a lot of interesting videos for you. So if you want to follow me and follow my journey and also be benefiting from my insights as a university lecturer, as an university professor who is working on this area of computational modeling, I do encourage you to subscribe to this channel. I really look forward to your comments. I try to respond to the comments. And if you do have any questions that you think will be beneficial, you know, you'd like me to help you with please do leave them in the comment section i'm more than happy to read them i'm fully back and i want to be making some exciting videos for you thank you and let's get back onto the video the second thing that you need to consider when modeling represent volume element in abacus is your material modeling choice you need to decide what material models you want to use because this is represented the volume element of course you're going to separately model all the constituents that make up the system and so whichever one you choose it really determines on the direction you're going to go so if you go back into abacus what you will see here is again if you look at these two systems we're considering so this green region is a fiber so i'm going to decide how do i model this fiber i'm going to model it as a linear elastic material with yielding and we fracture and all that so the extensive material model representation you have to capture for that of the fiber and the same thing applies for that of the metrics so in this instance the metrics is probably a polypropylene material so how do you capture the behavior of that polypropylene are you going to again just do a simple linear elastic behavior elastoplastic behavior with strain hardening with strain softening whatever strategy you want to take it depends on the complexity of the problem you're trying to solve sometimes you do model without considering damage will damage also be interesting important in your consideration in such a problem like this so this whole discussion of material model choice is key when you're going to model within a present volume element Sorry to interrupt your video. Let's just, I just want to bring you two points. The first one is please, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. I really, really would like to have you as part of the member in this community of computational modeling where we explore everything about computational modeling so that when contents like this are made you'll be the first to see it again if you have ideas or videos you would like me to make along this whole philosophy of what this channel is about please again do subscribe do leave me a comment and i will 
look at them and try and respond as much as possible. The second thing I want to let you know is that I'm building a life cohort masterclass. This is the very first that I've ever done on this channel. And it's something that people have requested quite a lot that I should help make videos to sort of teach them in more in depth about computational modeling across the issues that I make on this channel, like RV modeling, like periodic boundary conditions, different designs, and a whole wide range of, of computational modeling issues. If you want to know about it, I have a dedicated, you know, wait, wait list for this. So please click on the link in the description section of this video where you get to be informed consistently about the progression of this live cohort masterclass about computational modeling. So thank you for your interest in doing those two things and let's get back to the video. The third thing you need to consider in RealV modeling within Abacus is your interfaces. So the interfaces are the spaces between the constituents. So if you've got a fiber and the matrix there, are those boundaries between the fiber and the matrix, that's where the interface is. And usually it's described as an affected region. What that basically means is that it's a region which is neither the fiber nor the matrix. However, the behavior of the fiber and the matrix affect that region. So it would normally not be as soft as the matrix and normally not be as hard as the matrix, as the fiber. So in that respect, it's an affected region. And so its properties will be usually a gradation of the properties of the fiber and the matrix. And so how you choose to model that is really critically important. And I'll go back to Abacus and sort of illustrate this. So right in Abacus, you would see what I'm trying to describe. So again, the regions in red is the matrix, the regions in, orange, in green, is the fiber and then there's this small affected region which represents the interface that interface has a stiffness property that's slightly different from that of the fiber and the matrix and so how do you decide to deal with this some simulation will completely neglect the effect of these two ingredients and just simply tie the fiber to the matrix together and no problem but if you want to really on this model robustly behavior of the system you need to sort of capture the behavior of this interface region and traditionally the way to model this is a cohesive zone modeling which gives you a way of capturing the behavior of that interface effectively so you assign the necessary value properties so that when they begin to damage as a consequence of the behavior you know the, the load on the system that interface will, will also begin to respond appropriately in fact it's known that most of the strength in the composites you know would normally be dependent on the strength of the interface and so sometimes you can treat the fibers so as to create perfect binding within the matrix and the fiber thereby enhancing the, the strength of the interface so the interface is a critical consideration and however you decide to deal with that would be important in the, the determining the behavior of the system that you're going to model. the fourth consideration of modeling rv within abacus is the boundary conditions because you're doing a represent volume element modeling, your boundary condition will typically not be that of the structural scale representation of the problem. At the structural scale, you could easily replicate the boundary you see in the real specimen. So for example, you're doing a simple tensile test, you hold one end and you put the other end. However, for an RV modeling, you don't have regions where you could actually hold clearly and pull as you would do with a big sample. And also because the RV is really you homing in onto a localized region in the microstructure of the system, the load is often far removed from the RV that you have chosen. And also, if the RV is supposed to be represented, then you could replicate the RV so that in the end, the effect of the boundary is so far from the sample. So what you're then having to consider is what is the optimal boundary condition that you could use for modeling a representative form element within Abacus. And so there's been a lot of discussions of what exactly you could do. One of the crudest way that people could deal with this is to use a simple Dirichlet boundary condition where basically you replicate what you see in the full sample, in which case you hold one end and you pull the other end. In the holding in this instance, you're holding the fiber and the matrix together and on the pulling side you're holding, you're pulling the fiber and the matrix together and you're doing the expansion on that. There's a problem with that, obviously, as you could imagine, because you're coming onto a sample the actual holding is far removed from the sample and so you're not replicating reality and so you have a lot of problem with that sort of Dirichlet boundary condition approach. The better way to do the boundary condition consideration of this is to use what is called a periodic boundary condition and this is where it actually captures what you're trying to do in reality. You're 
samples are quite removed. The, the boundaries are removed from the RVA that you've chosen. However, a stress wave travels through the sample. So once you hold one end and pull the other end, due to that loading, a stress wave travels through the sample and sweeps through the RVA that you've chosen. And as it's sweeping through the RVA, the, the stiffer region of the RVA, which in this case will be the fiber, will be less deformed, and the softer region, which is the matrix, will be more deformed. And so you end up having some sort of a cyclic deformation due to this uh, stiffness mismatch, stiffness inconsistency between the constituents that make up that system. And this sort of periodic boundary condition is the best way to capture the behavior of a system that we're considering. So the fifth thing you need to consider when modeling RV within Abacus is what is your homogenization strategy? Homogenization is a big word in this area. And essentially what it's talking about is how do you harmonize all the stress strain differences within the material in order to generate a holistic stress strain behavior for the system. Because what you are dealing with is a heterogeneous media, it's a representative volume element. The stress history is often quite different at different sections in the domain. And so it's not easy to find a uniform stress in the structure. So a strategy to use is this strategy that involves you summing up all the stress history in the, in the domain and divide by the volume of that system. And this is what you call a homogenization. You're trying to homogenize a highly variable stress history in the domain across the time step of the simulation. And this can be very challenging. So there are different ways you can do this. If the domain is uniform, if the microstructure is uniform, then you could use some sort of um, you know, mathematical, asymmetrical, you know, com homogenization strategy, which works brilliantly well. So there's well-defined mathematics that you can employ to sort of do this. However, increasingly, because of the domain we are modeling, you know, in real life, they're quite heterogeneous, complicated, you know, with damage happening and with a lot of finite deformations and things like that. So a computational homogenization strategy is often adopted. And this often has an extensive set of, you know, engineering constitutive behavior that you need to incorporate to capture that. And within the literature, there are different ways that people have been able to do this. And so I do encourage you, you know, to look it up, computational homogenization in the, you know, in the in literature and be able to deal, deal with that. And there are different ways you can do this. So I've put in the link a paper that I've written in the past that sort of explores how I use one computational homogeneous ap approach for this sort of um, composites that we are looking at here. So that's the strategy. You need to find a strategy to do that. Also within this channel, this video will help you to generate stress strain data based on a micromechanical modeling response. Of course, the final thing that you need to do with consideration of RV modeling in Abacus is to extract effective properties. So these are properties like the Young's modulus, yield stress or the strength of the material, the failure strain, the onset of damage, the post-yield behavior, strain softening, plateau modulus, plateau stress, and then even strain hardening. So the whole constitutive behavior of that material, you could actually extract it from a homogenized stress strain data that you have. And so once you extract that, so that's a critical step, but how then do you know that those values are relevant? Those values are useful. So a final critical step in this is to make sure that your effective properties compares nicely with experiment. And so that means you must have some sort of experimental data, either you've done some experiment of your own, or you've looked into the literature and generated some experimental data from literature, and then begin to compare your numerical predictions with the experimental predictions, and then begin to find where there are deviations between the two. So that final step is called a validation step, and it's a critical step that you must consider if you're thinking about representative volume element within Abacus. So I did talk about a periodic boundary condition approach as one of the things you need to consider. So if you really want to understand the theory behind periodic boundary condition, this is a video that I made that talks extensively about the theory of periodic boundary condition. I think you'll find it really useful. Thank you for your interest in this channel and I'll see you in the next video.